Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and it's almost July 4th here in the United States, and that is a day for a ton of of fireworks, but July is also a time around the world where a lot of fireworks are going on. And last year, uh, on July 4th, I made a really cool fireworks video for the first time that I ever shot fireworks. Uh, I had a great time, and then I shared the video that I'm going to re-show to you guys right after we're done talking here with some extra tips. But I thought that video was so good uh, that I needed to re-upload it now with some extra info at the beginning so that people who didn't see it last year can learn from it this year because I learned a lot by just going out and shooting some basic tips and you're going to get a lot of this from that video was I shot on bulb I was on a tripod uh, I put my aperture somewhere around f13 I kept my ISO down because in this case even though you're shooting at night you may think you need to bump your ISO but you really should keep it lower and I kept it at 200 you can even put it at 100 something that I found to be very interesting early on is that I thought that a wide angle shot would work but I learned that it didn't work so what I did is I switched off to a 24 to 70 and then shot the rest of the show that way. Uh, I wasn't afraid to go vertical. I wasn't afraid to go horizontal. So really, it's about getting the basics and fundamentals down for shooting fireworks. And like I already said, be on a tripod. Try to have a cable release. But if you don't have a cable release, it's okay to shoot on bulb. And basically what you do on bulb is you anticip anticipate when the fireworks are going to go off and explode. You hold your finger down on the shutter. When you're done, you take your finger off the shutter. It becomes a lot of anticipation and playing around with it. So you should have a few chances to shoot a, a few fireworks shows that are going on during this season in July. So here, here's a cool tip that I have for focusing. A lot of people say go to Infinity Focus, but I found that Infinity Focus seems to miss in my mind. So on what you can do is focus right after a firework goes off. You have enough light and there's enough spectacle going on that you can manually tighten that up. Even at F13, you're gonna get a lot more in focus, but you can manually look through the camera and go, okay, yeah, I got that. And then lock your focus in manual so it does not shift. That's what I found worked best for me. And as you're gonna see in the video coming up right in a second, that it worked very well and the photos were really sharp and really nice and colorful and really good. So with that said, this video is coming right up, but don't forget the new USA I Shoot Raw t-shirt is in the store. It's got gold flake printing. It's really awesome with all of these flags. And if you use code USA, all one word, USA, when you check out after picking up one of these shirts, you'll get some free extra goodies with your order. So enjoy this video coming up. Have fun when you go out and shoot fireworks. Be careful, but definitely be calm and relaxed knowing what you're doing because you're gonna learn a lot from the video coming up and just go out there and shoot. So here it is, off to last year's video. There, it's like the Magic Kingdom. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. I am here setting up to shoot fireworks right now. Um, there's band playing behind me. I've picked a spot so that I can run my video and run photos at the same time. I'm probably going to start with the 14 to 24 on the D3S on the uh, tripod right here so that I can try to get the crowd in there. I want to show the backs of the crowd. We'll see how that lights up more so than just shooting the fireworks to put some dimension uh, up into the images. That's why I want to shoot from the back and get the whole sky in there. But we'll see what happens as it starts because I've never shot fireworks at this place. So I'll probably probably be at 200 ISO with this. Uh, I'll be at about 14 millimeters and uh, F8 to an F11 and the shutter speed. I'll probably sit there and do bulb and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, we'll play around. Just want to see what happens out here. Um, so recording right now is the D7000 on a three-legged thing Eddy tripod. Things working out really well right now. I'll do a full review on that at some point, but until then, let's see how these fireworks work out and we'll see how we do. See ya. All right, so here we are. I got done photographing the fireworks on July 4th and figured I would let some of the actual fireworks run in the background so what I did I had the Nikon D7000 on the let's see it was a three-legged thing tripod with a 16 millimeter fisheye lens on it so basically you can see in the bottom corner on occasion you can see my light from the camera 
recording the image, or you can sometimes see the screen when I'm replaying the photos. It was it was pretty cool to have this video running to capture this. I'm wearing my microphone so I can talk to it if I want, or so that it picks up all of this different audio, but it was really a really awesome time. I mean, I got there like three hours early. I picked a spot around where I thought most of the stuff was going to occur. Um, I ran into some other photographers there, and we just sat and talked. And, you know, this was the first time that I photographed fireworks at this location. I mean, honestly, it, it's pretty much the first time that I've ever taken fireworks pictures. I've, I've always thought about it, uh, but I've never actually gone out to do it. And I'm glad I did the research into the settings because when I shot, you know, a lot of this is trial and error. But when you have a good starting point, when you know that you need to set your camera to, say, uh, infinity focus, uh, I actually found it pretty easy to focus because what I waited for was actual firework to go off and then I was pretty quick to do a focus and then I could lock it on in manual uh, and I locked that in and it, and it wouldn't have to change so I started at f10 but I went to f13 um, and held it in in bulb and I also didn't have a cable release um, I know I recommend the cable release but in this case I didn't have one so I just basically held down the bulb and it seemed to have worked out very well. Um, early on, I wanted to shoot with the 14 to 24, and I knew right away that it was way too wide. I wanted to get the subjects in front of me to actually show up in the image so that you could see what was going on, but it really didn't work. So I had a change on the fly, and it was a good thing that I had a, uh, a really nice flashlight with me because I could check my focus with it. Uh, I could see things if I dropped it on the ground. It was just really good to have a flashlight with me. Um, and then what was really cool, I switched to the 24 to 70. You can see that a lot of the different exposures were somewhere, you know, you've seen some of the pictures pop up on the screen. Um, it was around like four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, and it's just really, it was really a lot of fun, and it's really a lot of anticipation. You know, seeing what's gonna work, is there a good, you know, burst of, uh, of light coming out of those fireworks at this time? I mean, sometimes if you held the shutter too long, there was too much light, and when there's too much light, then everything blends together, and it just didn't work out. But really, the majority of the pictures turned out really well, and what I found myself doing was recomposing a few times from horizontal to vertical, because as you can see here, as I go through some of the vertical shots, that the vertical shots just seem more interesting. You can follow the trajectory of the mortars as they're going off. Uh, you can see the American flag in the bottom right-hand corner. It just felt much better to shoot vertically. I also, you know, I still did some tighter shots where you can see that I didn't get the whole fireworks display in the image, but I still thought it was a cool image, uh, and it was just a lot of seeing what worked, and that's why I, I switched around a little bit. Um, some recommendations for the future is make sure you have something to kneel on, like a, a, a knee, some knee pads or something to sit on while you're out there, because you're going to be sitting a while while you're waiting for the fireworks to start. But I have to say, those starting settings, it's a really good place to go. Uh, the bulb setting with F8, you know, F11, F13, anywhere around there, you're going you're gonna to make it happen. And it, it's really, you just got to get out there and see it. And then once you're there, you can start to... Um, you know, at, interact or, or react to what's going on to see if you're framing the image right. Uh, because a lot is, you know, I'm pointing up at the sky, but I don't know exactly where the fireworks are going to start. So as soon as they start, I can compose where I want it and get moving. Um, yeah, let's see, what else do I have written down here? Not too much, but it was it was a lot of fun. And you can see in these images, the colors are cool. And, you know, really, there wasn't a lot of editing done after. It's just really pumping up the contrast, maybe a little bit of Mr. Phil light in one of the photos just to, to bring out the smoke. But I loved how the smoke was showing up, the sulfur was showing up in the images. Uh, and that's why the verticals just work better in this case. So, you know, some recommendations for the future for myself is concentrate on, on these verticals more than these horizontals. Uh, I would like to try some tighter shots, try to capture the whole explosion, but, you know, they're not as interesting as looking at the vertical shots after the fact. I mean, the verticals just really look good. They make me happy, and I think that this one right here is my favorite vertical from the whole thing. Uh, it just looks very just Disney-esque, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. So, you know, anytime fireworks come up, I know we're going to have to wait another year again for big, big fireworks like this, but hey... You know, we're prepared. I'm prepared for next year. I had a lot of fun. I'd love to do it again. And I learned quite a bit from just sitting out there and observing and testing out these settings. 
and making it work. So it's a real good ballpark place to start. Um, you know, go out there. I thought the 24 to 70 equivalent worked really well for me. Was quick to recompose, was quick to focus. That LED light, flashlight that I had really helped out quite a bit. So I hope that, you know, these images you can see all of the settings right on them so hopefully that helps you out you can see where i was how long i actually held down the bulb setting um and go from there and hopefully replicate it or do better than what i did so i hope you guys learned something i definitely learned quite a bit out there shooting these fireworks thank you very much jared Pullen, fro nose photo.com see ya To get a free photo guide on capturing motion in low light situations, please sign up right here on fronosphoto.com. Just put your name in the box, email address, hit send it, and you will automatically receive this free ebook as well as a 60 minute long studio photography studio lighting video that Adam and I created. On top of that, you're also going to get the exclusive emails that come out each week with some extra tidbits that you get first for being on the email list.